A six-year-old boy has become the first in France to have a prosthetic hand made by a 3D printer. Made and provided by an American company, we'll be speaking to the man behind it all in just a moment. The prosthesis is fitted with Velcro. It can be changed easily as the boy grows. And it costs just 50 euros to make. He's been dreaming about it for months. On Monday, Maxence received his new hand. He puts it on, fastening the Velcro straps. And there he goes, throwing a tennis ball like any other kid. Yeah. <laughs> Maxence looked at the hands of his favorite superheroes. He thought, well, they're superheroes, but they're not me. I want to make my own Super Max hand. So it's unique, and I can be sure that no one else has it. Maxence lives in the southeast of France. He grew up without a right hand. When he was born, his parents decided not to fit him with an artificial limb. But the new device looks set to change his life. What are you going to do? Grab things? Yes. Do other kids have it? Yes, I saw a video. And what do they do with it? They grab things. What things? The table. You'll be able to do that too. The artificial hand was made from a 3D printer. Maxence's parents bought it from a specialized humanitarian organization on the internet. But the boy designed it almost entirely. The prosthesis was painted in his favorite colors and even has the kid's initial printed on it. He can do what any other six-year-old boy does. But now, with his superhero hand, he does things with extra magical powers. Maxence is the first person in France to be fitted with a 3D printed plastic limb. And at only 50 euros, his new hand will be easy to replace as the young boy continues to grow. What an absolutely great boy. What a great story. Let's meet the man behind uh, this uh, whole affair. He is called John Schul, president of uh, Enable. Uh, he joins us from Rochester in the United States to talk about this remarkable story, this remarkable hand. John, to me, as a layman, it seems like science fiction, but you've made it happen. Uh, well, it's not just me. Uh, we have a community of this week, 5,800 volunteers all over the world who have 3D printers, who have design skills, who have uh, an enthusiasm about helping other people. And we've put together what is becoming an international movement. And you do this with a 3D printer. It just seems completely uh, beyond, well, certainly my comprehension. Well, you should understand that these are simple plastic devices. I have, um, I have a model here. Show us how of it works. One. It's a simple, lightweight plastic device. Uh, and we have simple strings that connect one part to another. And when you bend the wrist, it makes a fist. So it's a body-powered plastic device. It's not rocket science, but as you have seen, it changes lives and it's particularly appealing for children because it makes them feel like a superhero and because they're cheap and children grow and would outgrow regular medical devices. John, in our report, we saw Maxence, the, the six-year-old boy here in France, who apparently had helped design his own hand. I heard that. Um, I don't know the specifics about this case, but one of the exciting things about this movement is that we make all of the information, all of the instructions, all of the designs available for free on the Internet. And increasingly, we hear stories of people, including families and children, who download these files. They learn from our materials and they do it themselves for themselves or for other children in other places. It's, it's a remarkable story and it must give hope to many, many families, John. How much um, use, flexibility, how much real movement, real hand movement can a child regain with this? Well, you know, it depends on the nature of their, um, their upper limb difference. The hand, I think, that Maxence had, certainly the hand intended for this device, is one with a full palm but no fingers. If they have full wrist movement, they can now open and close their mechanical fingers just by bending their wrist. That's exactly what Maxence had, John. If he had full wrist movement, we saw him climbing without the hand. Then we saw there him using go. the hand as well, throwing a ball, hand shaking, and almost arm wrestling. It was remarkable. It, well, it is remarkable. Uh, 
So the answer is they can do all of that. Now, you know, kids, when I talk to kids, they have two big ambitions. One is they want to be able to ride a bike. And for that, these hands may be okay. We don't really recommend it because people can get into accidents on bikes for all sorts of reasons, but it's probably functional enough for that. And then they also want to climb on the jungle gym. And for that, they're not up to that. So that gives you a sense of the limits of the devices. But they are substantially better than nothing. And right now, nothing is what children with that condition get. So it's a big advance. So you are smiling and your smile, I'm sure, being echoed by many families around the world that you've helped. How many uh, children have been able to benefit from this? You know, at this point, I think our best estimate would be around 1,500 devices. Um, but it's hard to know because of cases, perhaps like Maxence, in which um, they download the files and do them themselves. In, but there are about 1,500 cases, I think, that we can identify where there are known makers or known recipients who've also been in touch with us. John, what's next for this type of technology? Well, we're working on uh, arms now, which will allow people whose arm ends here, say, and they don't have a wrist, to, for example, bend and unbend their elbow and use that to open and close the hand. We're also working for on exoskeletons, or orthotics as they're called. Um, we've done one now here in Rochester for a child who had half of his brain removed um, in connection with epilepsy. And while he can move his arm, he can't open and close his fingers. So we have an exoskeleton that takes the arm movement and uses it to open and close the fingers of his intact but non-functional hand. And in the long run, we hope to be able to use 3D printers and other emerging technologies to address all sorts of possibilities. We've, um, we've proven, I think, that there are thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of people all over the world who are ready and willing and able to give the world a helping hand. Give the world a helping hand. That is a brilliant way to put it, John. Um, final question for you. Um, how important is it to you to keep the cost down to people? Because I understand this hand for Maxence would cost just 50 euros. How important is it well, for you to only, keep that cost down? Uh, not only does it only cost 50 euros, we typically give these devices away for free. Most of, the, of our devices have been donated for free by the volunteers who pay for the materials, invest their own time, and do all of the work on a volunteer basis. Um, that's very important to us. We are interested in keeping them free and making sure that whatever the price, affordable upper limb prosthetics are available to anyone anywhere. That's actually the function of the Enable Community Foundation, which we are now trying to get support for so that we can turn this movement into a normal fact of life all over the world. John, I wish you all the luck in the world with this one. Respect to you, sir. You brought that boy's uh, mobility back. Fantastic stuff. And thank you for joining us here on France Van Kett. An absolute pleasure speaking to you, sir.